Welcome to a market update. It's been a while since I did one of those. It's been so much going on, but finally renovation project is pretty much completed at this point. But to jump into things, NASDAQ, SP500, everything seems like they're at an all time high. But what you gotta think about, why is the Dow, NASDAQ, and SP500 seem at an all time high, but the economy is not? Something is just really not adding up. So you got the whole inflation factor that's kicking in. Where are these asset prices driving up because a lot of company stocks are not at that point right now except unless you're like nvidia or one of those semiconductors related to ai that's really killing it netflix has been doing really well it's definitely at an all-time high for me that's one thing i bought around 170 dollars a share facebook i bought around 96 and i have not sold those those are sitting in my retirement right now when it comes to my solo 401k if you don't have one of those and you are self-employed i do recommend you getting one of those account you i have mines with charles schwab's but if you do not have a self-employment then you actually cannot create a solo 401k you have to use whatever allocations that your employer provides you that's what you have access to so let's look at the sp500 year to date it's like almost at its peak it peaked around 56 dow jones it was at 41 at its high and it's pretty much at 41 right now it's crazy and then nasdaq NASDAQ is the only one that retracted. A lot of tech stocks, stocks that I own are actually inside of NASDAQ. It was from 18,000 to now 17,500. It's not a, it's only a thousand points. It's not a huge down. We could look at the Russell 2000. Yeah, it, it, it didn't fluctuate, but it's pretty high. Oil prices, it was around 80, now it's around 74, 75. So this is where the major indices are, but we're going to dive into our stocks in our portfolio that we actually own remember those two portfolios that i set up back in december it's been probably two months since i have not updated on progress on it i have not neglected because we want to track how these do over a year i don't look at stocks performance or a portfolio performance over a short term because you got all these economic downturns up terms that happen so you want to look at it over a longer term period to figure out exactly if this would work for you and inside of like your retirement if your employer does offer several funds what you can do they usually have to provide you this brochure or document that shows you the performance of those particular funds across the past one year mark five year mark ten year mark sometimes you can get it for 15 and 20. it all depends on your employees plan what they attributed and provided me i was more on the aggressive side so i only bought things i put contribution towards things that were doing at least 12 percent or more per year i even went to 15 at some and 20 percent, and it did pretty well to the point where now that portfolio it tripled for the amount of contribution that i did as well as my employer did it is a 401k not a Roth, so meaning that you're reducing your taxes going in but you're gonna have to pay the taxes when you go out if you did the Roth, then you when you actually liquidate or when you get to your minimum required distribution or whenever you gotta withdraw you don't have to pay taxes on the capital gains that you have from your or Roth. personally i feel like i'm going to continually invest in real estate so i'm going to get those depreciation tax deductions meaning i'm going to have something to offset the capital gains tax that i'm well, the taxes that I'm supposed to pay inside of the 401ks for withdrawing when that time comes for me to withdraw. So I'm not too worried in that aspect. PBR, one of those stocks that I said they pay pretty high dividends. Their dividends right now is doing 12%. It was at 20% at one point, so it keeps fluctuating. But I held on to what I have. And then you also have Lumen went crazy. Lumen, I don't think they're paying dividends anymore, but they went crazy. They went from like a dollar to five dollars and thirty-five cents. You can see this. Yeah, I should have, but and I had my eyes on this, right? Dividend stocks at one point it was, but I never hit the trigger button, so I left it as is. The other ones I'm not paying attention to as much. Our retirement crypto. That's a huge value inside of a lot of my portfolios. They've been going down. They're not down enough from the point where I bought a lot of these. So therefore, I haven't moved. I actually have some cash sitting around inside of my retirement allocated, waiting to puncture some of these assets when they reach at a good low point. And I'm talking like BCHG, if it hits around a dollar, I'm going in. GDLC, if it hits around $10 or less, I'm going in. Litecoin, if it hits around 5 bucks, I'm going in. So we're getting close to those marks. And I'm really excited to see if it does go down. If it doesn't, I already have a lot of these. 
then I'm just gonna keep going up. But if it does, I'm gonna have the opportunity to actually purchase a lot much more. This is where Grayscale is at because it's following a lot of crypto. And if we look at crypto real quick, you'll see the similar matching Binance. Let's look at it, how it's been performing the past six months. It's almost flat, but it's definitely took a downtrend from like 630 peak at around 700 to now 530. So it's been going on the downtrend and BCH, which is the equivalent in BCHD inside of Grayscale, right? It's going to follow that, that stock, that crypto. It's kind of like a spot ETF in a sense, a spot trust. As we can see, it was at 700 and it's at 322. So it went half down in value. And let's just do a quick comparison just so you guys know what I'm talking about. We could see it went from $20 to 622. So it actually dropped down even lower than the, the other one for the past six months, right? It didn't do the half drop, but kind of close. But they do follow similar trends mostly. I think Grayscale, when it goes up, it shoots up a lot higher. So maybe that's why it dropped a lot higher too. Ethereum 2500, it's just been playing around that mark for the past month. Like it's just been chilling there. But it's definitely at a buy opportunity, but not an aggressive buy opportunity. To me, Ethereum is an aggressive buy under 1000 I remember I had $10,000 waiting to purchase 100 shares of Ethereum. And I said, as soon as it hit under $100, I'm going and buying 100 shares of it. It did, but I didn't put a limit buy. Instead, I was trying to do a manual buy, and I totally forgot. It slipped my mind, uh, and I, I just missed out on the opportunity. I still have four Ethereums that I bought a long time ago, around $800 a share. This was in 2018. I didn't miss out too much. Litecoin, I have a lot of Litecoin right now. Similar to Litecoin Trust, we could see... It went from 100 to 60, so about a 40% drop within the past six months. Now, let's just look how Litecoin Trust is doing within the past six months. So, it went from $40 to 13 bucks, 70. That's about a 75, no, 66% drop. So, they drop pretty aggressively on the Litecoin Trust side. But like I said, when it goes up, Litecoin Trust, meaning all the grayscale associated stocks, they usually rally up more than the actual coin itself. All right, let's look at the main big companies. So I'm going to look at Microsoft, for example, right? For the past six months, they've been pretty flat. Year to date, they're up about 10%. The reason I want to look at these is really from the basis of them upkeeping with the economy as inflation is shooting up we can see they're still sustaining so these big companies they're still sustaining surviving even when they hit a little down point they're able to afford up top because these companies they're they're gonna survive every company and their mothers use microsoft products they just made themselves kind of like a monopoly and it's a little bit sad because a lot of their experience sucks because this is my specialty Let's look at Salesforce, same thing. They've been pretty much flat, but they're up 22% year over year. 70% from the past five years. To me, that's not a great return, but it's better than some. Google, year to date, they're up 17%. Over year, they're up 25 These companies are just surviving pretty nicely. And let's look at Netflix. Netflix is, I have a lot inside of there, I think. I have 75000 or maybe 80000 worth of value of Netflix because I bought a lot around $175 a share. So one year mark, they're up 63%. Year to date, they're up 40%. Six months, they're up 15%. I don't plan on selling it. I know you could. I could have day trade, sold it at around $700 and bought back a little bit more under. But I don't feel like playing that game. Facebook was on the riskier side. Year to date, they're up 46%. Six months. 7% over one year mark, they're up 78%, which is pretty good. But I got them around right here. This was around December of 2022. It hit around like 90 something dollars a share. And I just, whoop, put right in. And I came out pretty much great on top. Other than that, semi pro conductor. Let's look at that. Because, like I said, some of these things are hyped up so much like really so much with the whole AI thing happening. You gotta be very careful. Anything that you see hype, try to run the other way. If you did not capitalize when it was low enough, 
so that you can see that return. Don't try to come on and hop on board when it gets to the point where it just starts growing aggressively. I think at that point it's pretty much too late. But yet today they're up 56%. One year mark 73. Five year they've done very well. Like for if you bought around COVID time for semiconductors, you did very well. Like you you chilling. But they're up 73% year over year. I think they're okay. But you see they peaked right here at around 1200 1200 per share all the way now down, down to 443 per share. So they lost almost 66% in value. So about two thirds of their value went pretty much down. I wanna see Nvidia now because it's the similar company to that. So year to date, they're up 153%. So they pretty much two, two, two and a half X. One year mark, they're still shooting up. So Nvidia is just crushing the game. They're a monopoly because a lot of AI driven pretty much organizations, they rely on companies like NVIDIA to operate. ChatGPT, I'm sure Gemini is leveraging that as well. I Something I have not looked into, but they've capitalizing right now on the market because of that. And their market cap is at $3 trillion. They are killing the game. I thought they were more on the gaming side, but when it came to technology, as AI started really driving up, it needs a lot of that GPU power, therefore, NVIDIA was definitely there at the right time to really capitalize on it. I'm still holding on to my other stocks like Lab, Lucid Motors. Lucid Motors did some nice moves the other day. Rivian, I'm holding on to. I'm going to buy more Rivian if it hits around $10 mark again. Right now, it's at $13.83. So those things I'm more on the outlook for, like on the car side. Let's look at Tesla real quick. I don't own any. I don't plan on. I think I missed that wave entirely. So therefore, I'm not even going to bother. So they're down 17%. Their market cap is at $657 billion. I thought they were in the trillion dollar mark, but I guess not. They lost a lot of valuation. They peaked at four. Yeah, it looks like $400 per share. So they were at $1.2 billion at one point. The whole car sector is being battered. X paying all, all in the car sector. I'm just being patient. Jemaya is more that technology that based in Africa, they were involved in a lot in like the whole e-commerce space when it comes to e-commerce technologies. So they're similar to Amazon in a sense. That's why I'm betting on them at this low point. Amazon did not get to where it's at in a matter of years. It took decades, but the people that really capitalized and ate well from Amazon stocks or the people that held on for that 15, 20 year mark. I'm not saying I might do this for that, but I'm definitely a long time term holder for that. Because if I don't need it, why am I going to sell it, try to jump on another bandwagon? This is where you missed out. Qdell, I bought around $39. As we, as we can see, it has been going up. It passed the $40 mark. I thought $39, 40 bucks was a great buy point for it. And I'm just holding on to. GoTo has been dropping a bit. If it does drop to the point where it's like I can capitalize on it, I will definitely do so. Meaning it around the dollar mark, I will definitely buy more or under a dollar, I will definitely buy more. They're a long-term play in the educational space. If you're not looking to do that, then definitely don't do it. Nikola, I don't know what's going on with Nikola, but I still hold on to the shares that I have and we can see Lucid Motors here. I bought Lucid around $3.30 and it's at 394 right now, peaked at 443. I feel there's a positive outlook for this company. It's just a matter of patience. Just like with Tesla, we just got to have a bit of patience. We're going to look at our $1,000 portfolio. We can see overall we're down $214, so about 20%, a little over 20% in value. You may look at this and be like, wow, this is a lot. You know, like, I don't know. But this is the ride of the market pretty much. You got to think about where the economy is. It's not that great. A lot of companies are suffering right now and only the strong will survive. I do have some strong plays inside of crypto. So that's why you see ETCG, LTCN and BCHD here. So about 33 three of the 12, 10 that I've selected here or crypto related. VRAR is in the virtual reality space. I think it's a long term play. And then you got Beyond Me, which I feel because I still purchase a lot of their stuff for me as a vegan but it's it's i don't know i don't know where they're gonna head uh in the future because you don't know where human interest is gonna fall into play you don't know when the supply is gonna kick in it's a matter of when where but 
the optimistic thing you got to outlook is what are people actually using? What are they constantly using? And I see this still on the shelves and everything. This is why I think this is a long-term play. They're going to survive. It's just a matter of time. Lore, <clears throat> I found about because it's a company I've spoken with, but we didn't matter going through, but I thought their technology was pretty interesting. You got Rivian, Xpeng, and Nikola. These are all car, EV, space stocks. Long-term play. And then I have Lab here, one of my all-time favorites. We're only down about $8 from the original price that we bought it. So we're in the red. It's all good. We're only positive in BCHD and Jamaya. It's all good, but long-term play, like I said. And our $10,000 portfolio, we're down about a little over 10%, 11% range. We are green in some of these. As you can see, our ETFs and mutual fund, ITYAX and ARGFX, we're up. They pretty much have a balanced set of portfolio to pick out which funds they do. I do look at these sometimes just to compare to see how well they're doing against the entire portfolio that I have. And that's the reason I have these. And I allocated $2,000, so meaning 20% initially, like you see here, 1000 1000 each initially on each. Because I do think if you need some cash, you don't sell the stocks that are doing bad and being bad. You try to get the ones that had a gain. And then close to the end of the year, if you see that the other stocks that you had or you want to offset your taxes, then you send the ones, you sell the ones that you think they're they're doing bad now and they're not going to survive another year or so. But those are things you kind of tax plan, speak to your accountant. This is just what I would do. Remember, you want to try to do long-term capital gains, meaning hold it in on for a year or more and then you sell it. Because if you do short-term, you're going to pay the maximum taxes on a lot of these. So... These right here, if I need something, I would do liquidate and do what I got to do and buy some more when I'm able to have the cash in return. But the idea is that you do not touch your investments. Do what you got to do. As much as I could say, take loans. You want to take responsible loans. Don't take things that you feel like you cannot afford. The income is not bring, coming in in order for you to sustain and survive. Definitely don't do that. So this is where we're at with this right now. We got the crypto base, so that's GDL, CLTC, and BCHD, and GBTC. We're up for most of them. We're just down in two of them. But overall, our crypto side, when it comes to the stocks, linked ones for Grayscale, we are pretty much up. Nikola being battered, Lab a little bit, NIO, also in the EV space workhorse, TDOC, Telehealth, long-term play, go-to long-term play, in the educational space, so is Tal. Jemiah, we are in the green, which is good, but Xpeng, EV space, again, not doing too good. Uh, STRR being battered, Law being battered, Rivian, EV space, Beyond Meat, and you got Paymentus is up as well. In terms of crypto, you got Matic, we're not doing too good, Litecoin, not so good, ETCG, but Doge and Shib, we bought them at a low price, so therefore we are up. And near, if you were able to buy that, you are up slightly from our original price, and so is Cadena. The goal here is, as they're going down like this, and to me, is a 30% rule of thumb. So if anything dropped at 30% from what I originally bought it, and I feel like the company is promising for the future, then I would buy some more. A quick example, for example, like NIO, right? We bought at 9 nine dollars and ten cents and right now it's at three dollars seventy cents it's a good time to buy some more if you feel that the company's pretty promising because we are down pretty much quite a bit like 66 percent from the nine dollars almost like 60 percent so i'd purchase some more in that regards but for this example this illustration of this portfolio is that it's a fixed portfolio we're not adding any money in we only had $10,000 to spend, and we spent it all at once back in December of 2023. And this is pretty much where we are at right now. Because I wanted to see if I that's all the money I had. I never had any money. I did no more contribution. How would this portfolio perform? What would perform better than this is if you keep buying, like doing those downturns and keep purchasing more, you would see you would outperform this quite a bit. But for the sake of illustrations, we're going to keep things as is. So that's pretty much where things are at right now. I hope you found all this insightful. Of course, if you have any suggestions, companies to Outlook, definitely feel free to drop it in the comments below. We can talk about it, share it, and I can look into it further. So 
Like, share, subscribe so this can get out to other people to get their inspiration for investing, especially if you're in a beginner, you don't know much about the stock market, what stocks to pick. This is not financial advice, of course. This is all for educational purposes. You have to dig in to this a lot further for you to understand how this operates. And know that every investment comes with risk. So I'm not telling you to buy any of these in a particular that it's gonna guarantee you return, but these comes with risk. You gotta do your own assessment to see if this is worth the risk. I always say only invest in money that you're willing to lose. If you're not willing to put that money away and never see it again, do not do it at all. So thank you so much. Peace and love, trust in Jesus. Have an amazing one. Hustle, hustle, hustle.